I'll first want to start uh, with asking you about a brief introduction about, uh, you know, about yourself and uh, Moti.co. Uh, yeah, so over to you, Ben. Sure. Um, so Moti is um, a small team. There's essentially three of us full time and then uh, a Zapier dev contractor and an API dev um, who's also a contractor plus a data analytics guy who's also a contractor. And we are, we are the only Pipedrive elite partner uh, in the Asia Pacific region. And okay. so we cover worldwide, but we mainly concentrate on Australia and Southeast Asia mm -hmm. um, and do some, some in Europe, uh, some on the West coast of the US. Um, we don't do any, if we can avoid it on the east coast of the US, because as you guys would be well aware, the time zone doesn't work. Oh, by the way, I'm actually in Yangon in Myanmar at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, only about an hour's time difference from you. Uh, yeah. And the, the east coast US time zone doesn't work. And essentially what Modi does is we do pipe drive implementations. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we work obviously with Just Call. Uh, we work with Autopilot, the marketing automation platform, um, and uh, Zapier, basically using Zapier. Um, and we also specialize in the real estate industry um, okay. to a degree, at least to a degree. Um, probably about 40% of our clients are real estate. Mm -hmm. I think we lost you, Ben, for a moment. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Yeah. Back now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, as you might guess, my internet is a little bit um, <laughs> unstable at the moment. My apologies. It's not really my internet. It's something to do with uh, the Wi-Fi on this particular laptop. So apologies if I disappear. <laughs> no cheers, man. Um, yeah, so essentially that's the summary of Modi. We're really pipe drive experts. We work with a few other systems. We're not a big team and we mainly concentrate, I would say, on real estate and we're trying to move up market in the sense of aiming more so at uh, pipe drive users with larger teams um, mm -hmm. and also increasing our value proposition by offering things like external reports and other options that make clients stickier to us. Right. Right. Perfect. Um, so now, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, that you are actually working uh, remotely as well. You're from, uh, you're working from Myanmar. Uh, so, you know, since you've been working remotely for a long time, uh, I'm assuming, I think I've been connected with you for the past two years now. Yep. Uh, and I've been seeing you working from different locations. I think the first time I spoke to you, uh, you were in Philippines and, and then uh, now uh, you're in my, uh, Myanmar. So uh, since you've been working remotely, any tip that you want to share with businesses, you know, we've recently moved to remote working. Um, I would say the biggest thing for us is have a daily stand up. So have a daily stand up with your team, even if it's only 15 minutes, even if it's only look to look at the other person's face. Mm -hmm. um, you can often get more out of that 15 minutes than you can get out of spending an hour going forward on back and forth on Slack. Right. So that, that daily stand up at the set time each day, you try to make sure that no one misses it and try to make sure that you prepare for it as well. Um, for me, that's the biggest thing. I think this is a really, uh, good hack because establishing your main connection with the team is kind of must means while you are working remote. Yeah. And, and can I ask um, you guys, are you still working remotely? Um, the Just Call team at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we've been working remote. Uh, you know, we've been working the remote scenario for the past, I think, five months now, Abhishek. Mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, four or five months. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it did get a little, uh, it did start to get a little on our nerves, uh, maybe in the mid of, you know, like a couple of months back. But then again, you know, we, we got back on our feet. Uh, we dusted ourselves out, uh, gave us a bit of a shake and, and now we're running again. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, the the COVID situation for you guys there. Obviously, I read the news, so I can see it's it's not going potentially as well as um, what India would like. Is that still the case? That is correct. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, again, it's 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 a it's a very uh, typical situation for the whole world, right? Uh, yeah. if COVID actually hit you like uh, you weren't even looking in something. Someone came and hit you with a bat. So no one was prepared, and it, that's the same thing with India. You know, uh, it's the world. There is a lot of uh, uh, things going on, and yes, it has been difficult. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, the best I can do, or the best anyone else can do, is realize the person's responsibility and and move from there. Yeah. Um, so Ben, getting back to uh, you know my third question, what role? you know, according to you, what role Just Call plays while you're working remotely? Uh, for us, two things. Um, the first is it allows us to have an Australian phone number, um, which is super important. And so we have a, an Australian mobile number and an Australian Melbourne-based um, landline number. Uh, and that right. makes a huge difference for us from the perspective of a perception thing for our, especially for our Australian clients. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's probably the first thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, we do just call implementations um, alongside, along with Pipedrive, obviously. Um, and so for us, it's, it's one of our tools that we have that's actually something that we work with and on. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the two things is having that um, Australian phone number and the second thing is working with you guys on the implementation side. Right. And just to, you know, now since you've brought up implementation, uh, I would want to know a bit about, you know, how has your experience been with our implementation team? I mean, I've also been a part of uh -huh. uh, getting implemented things for you for a long time. Then uh, a lot of other people took over. How has that experience been for you? Uh, look, I would say it's broadly positive. You guys are very responsive as a development team. Um, and so uh, if we need, especially if we need some bespoke work for a client um, or we have questions about something in particular uh, that's deep within Just Call, um, you're very responsive. Um, and so I, I would say... Out of all the teams that we work with, you guys are the most responsive um, from an implementation side of things, um, more so than Pipedrive and more so than Autopilot. We really feel like we get personal service from you guys, whether that's from you, Sandy, or from uh, Pratik and Prabat, or from um, uh, um, Tandy. I can't remember his name, Tandy. Taren. Taren, Taren, thank you. From a, from a support perspective, you guys are all really good. Um, and so we have a really good, I have nothing bad to say about Just Call in that sense. Okay, so if we summarize it for uh, Moti.co, so uh, the first thing is the local number implementation, the second thing is integration, and the third thing is service, which you kind of like the most uh, if you are using Just Call. Uh, so, uh, in continuation with this question, Ben, I would just like to ask, like, if you are the, if you are in charge of just calls, so what changes would you like to see with us, or what improvement would you expect from us? Um, I think a few of the changes that I want are not possible because Twilio doesn't allow you guys to do it, <laughs> and and it's really down to. Um, uh, some specific processes when it comes to, let's use Australia as an example, mm -hmm. um, masking numbers and being able to mask an outbound SMS message so that you could really use both um, uh, your, so you could have your original mobile number, make outbound calls and do outbound SMSs. And also when the call comes inbound, if it's to the number that's been masked, your original number, so that you could still have that come into Pipedrive. And look, I know that's, well, from what I understand, it's not you guys, that's a Twilio thing. 
Um, but for us, that would make the biggest difference, particularly in the real estate industry. It's real estate agents, as you may understand, really value their original number. And the thought of changing that or having an additional number is just something that most of them can't comprehend doing. And right. those two things would make a huge difference to us from how many just call implementations we could get across the line with clients. Um, <clears throat> things that are possible. Um, look, most of the stuff that you guys have done for us um, or that we've asked you've done, um, I would say, um, and Sandy, I think this is something you may have gone through with us previously. Um, mm -hmm. Working with um, uh, Just Call and uh, what's your sister company called? Root? Root? Call Root. Call Root. Call Root. Um, um, our failing as a, as a team is we don't know too much about the marketing, analytics, AdWords side of the world. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel that there's probably more that we could offer our clients from a call route perspective. Um, but we've never gone down the path of bringing on someone, even a contractor who could take us down that um, path. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'd like, personally, I'd like to understand more about call route and how we could apply it to clients. Um, we're probably not ready right now, but it's probably as we get deeper into some more specialist um, work say in real estate I'd like to understand more about that and how it could be applied to particular industries definitely uh, no, yeah that that has made sense and uh, you know yeah call route uh, again it's it's a it'll take you to because it introduces a completely different domain uh, mm. if you if you look at it Ben uh, I mean just call on one hand it's a tool for sales and support teams for for people reaching out while uh, call route is just meant to make sure that you're tracking each and every uh, expenditure of your ads, uh, if you are, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a two. Of course, there are two different domains. And yes, uh, you know, if you if you any time down the lane, if you're looking forward to having an introduction about call route, I'll be very happy to give it to you. Uh, you know about how exactly it works, uh, and I think it does integrate with Pipedrive. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's also a plus. Yep. Um, yeah, so look, um, they're, they're the things, I can't think of anything else. Let me just ask my colleague here. Mm -hmm. um, apart from what I've just said, have you got anything else from a Just Call perspective that you would love Just Call to be able to do? Um, I've had my headphones on. Oh, like sorry. <laughs> yeah, not on the spot. Okay. Uh, if we come up with anything following the meeting, we'll, we'll send it through to you guys. Sure, absolutely. No problem. Uh, so now coming to my next question, uh, and this is going to be interesting, Ben. So how would you feel if you could no longer use Just Call? Uh, hold on a sec. Yes. As consultants, to mm. be able to log in our clients that are paying to go. Uh, okay. Um, to go back to the previous question for a sec, Sandy, um, as consultants who work on the implementation side, um, being able to access a client's portal from an sort of like an admin perspective without having to have a seat in, right. like without mm -hmm. Hello at Modi having to have a seat in there. And so to sort of have like a, a partner seat within the client's um, just call would be a huge help because otherwise we have to log in using their details and then when we're on support we need to make sure that via intercom you guys add our email address into the chat and things like that yeah. um, and sometimes it confuses our clients because we're working away in the background logged in as the client and then as soon as intercom's like not active for what 15 minutes or something it sends the transcript of the uh, support chat to the client and all of a sudden the client's like, hey, have you been in my account chatting to Just Call? Mm -hmm. So that would make a big difference. Particularly in setup, because we can't get past Android email and we can't do anything else. Ah, uh, yes. Um, something that Taryn did help us with last time, um, and we're going to we contact you guys each time we do it, but during setup, you need to enter in you need to enter in their email address. The client's email address. 
ad address and then there's a dual auth check and then you need to put in a credit card even though it's only seven dollars for the first month but that process means that the client has to be heavily involved and if they're not in our time zone um, or something like that it makes setup really difficult although Taryn and the team have said next time we're up against that, they will override it for us. So that's a help. Um, but that's the other thing that would help from a change perspective. Okay. I think your vendor portal uh, for service industries is a really good idea. Means we will just convey this with the product team and I believe we can like work on it and we can definitely do something about it. Yeah, cool. That, that, right. would, be, that would be a big help. Um, to go to your next question, um, which I believe is, how would you feel if you could no longer use Just Call? Was that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is is Kixi still around, <laughs> <laughs> or is all have all the Twilio, have all the Twilio backended systems disappeared? No, no. Um, <laughs> just Just Call has disappeared. They just stick to Just Call. Yeah. Look, um, for us, from a uh, implementation perspective working with clients um, you guys do have some features that um, mean that I think that just call is superior to Kixi who's probably second um, but definitely superior to air call and um, Tokay Toki from a from a pipe drive perspective at least um, air call and Toki uh, don't have the ability to integrate SMS or you not, not bring it in um, to the system. And um, Kixi is just harder to use from an implementation perspective. We don't have the freedom from a call disposition perspective to make it trigger automations within Pipedrive. And so a lot of that probably deeper work that your devs have done um, on some of those more specialized features that are on the um, advanced or the professional plan or whatever you guys call it. Um, we would really miss those features from, from our client's perspective. Um, and so that would be the biggest thing for us. Um, like from Moti's perspective, just as a client, um, we use it super simply, which is, is just for us, it's just a phone number. And so we would go and use, whether it's another Twilio system or, or one of the others that's not Twilio, we would, we would use one of those basically. Okay. Anything about our customer service team? Yeah, I think your customer service team is really good. Um, uh, for us, we can tell when, and this is not negative feedback. It's just because we probably know a fair bit. Uh, we can tell when some of your newer members might be, um, faking an answer rather than rather than maybe like really providing the answer or going to talk to someone who probably knows the answer and so for us sometimes we know that we just if there's someone we don't recognize we just push a little bit harder but I also understand that is all support we get the same thing with pipe drive we get the same thing with autopilot so we completely understand it um, my feedback would be um, anyone that's new, coach them to, if they don't know something or if they're unsure, go straight to someone who's senior and ask the question rather than trying to bluff their way through it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's definitely not unique to you guys. It's support all around the world. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Uh... So uh, before, like you were, means uh, before just call, I don't know like what the cloud telephony solution you were using or whether you were using any cloud telephony solution. So what is the number one thing for you that you were not able to do, means that you are able to do now and you were not able to do that before just call? Um, we weren't using, uh, okay, yes we were. We were using Skype previously for ourselves. Um, and the most obvious thing is Skype from a UI UX perspective, in my opinion, is a nightmare. And so it's just not, I don't know how they've messed it up so much over so many years, but it's just not as user-friendly, I don't think, is what it should be. And so it's a pleasure 
to be able to have um, something as user friendly as Just Call. That's from the client perspective. Um, from the implementation perspective, uh, we hadn't used anyone before we used Just Call, and you guys were the first system that we used. And then over time, um, to try to get a breadth of experience, we have um, also implemented Pixie for clients um, and also Toki, or however you pronounce it. Um, but now we only implement Just Call um, okay. because we find you guys uh, easier, better support. Um, you're also a bit more available in our time zone, which helps. Um, and so those things together mean that you're, you're a bit better than Kixi um, and a few of the features you have and much better, in our opinion, than the other two. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, Ben, I'll, uh, you know, and then that, that's very helpful to understand uh, that. And I think uh, the first time we talked, it was about Skype. There was, there was some confusion now that I remember uh, in terms of connecting with your Skype and since we were using Google Hangouts back then, uh, so yeah, I, I remember you were using Skype. Uh, so now just to, you know, I think, and, and I think this is uh, just one of my last questions to you. Uh, how do you think, you know, Just Call has helped you uh, in terms of reducing, uh, you know, communication gap maybe with your customers or how is it helping your clients? I mean, you, you're all obviously in touch with uh, your customers as well, you know, who are using Just Call. So how do you think it has impacted them uh, in reducing a customer uh, a customer provider gap, or how is it, has it increased uh, their communication response time, or how and how also is it managing is it helping them manage the current situation, which is you know uh, everyone going remote, etc. Um, I think the answer to the question from like talking about our clients. Uh, some of our bigger clients that we've switched across, what it's enabled them to do is they've often come across from say something like Podio, um, mm. the CRM Podio, which is used a lot in real estate, um, yeah. but it's not as user friendly as Pipedrive. It's not as modern as Pipedrive. And so Podio has a, um, a pretty decent integration from my understanding with CallRail, I think. Mm -hmm. And what, just call allows is for the clients to switch across to a more flexible, more cost effective, easier to use CRM that can be implemented, more customizable that can be, and um, more custom, more cost effective to implement CRM for real estate um, and still have that same sort of call rail uh, level of features um, that they have on Podio. Um, and talking about some of our smaller clients, it's really just open that opens their eyes to what's possible from a VoIP telephony perspective, which is like a lot of people just don't realize that you have the ability to make a phone call out of your CRM, send an SMS out of your CRM, um, have call dispositions that will trigger automations and things like that. So from the client's perspective, uh, it's opened their eyes to what is possible. From our perspective, it's very similar to an answer I gave before, which it enables us to have an Australian-based um, phone number and for people to give us a call. And also when we don't answer, we have our little very small IVR set up that just goes to our voicemail and things like that. So um, that's the difference it makes for, first of all, our clients and then us. Right, right. All right. uh, for, to, your, to answer your last question, from a COVID perspective, I don't yeah. have any feedback really um, mm -hmm. from us or any of our clients. I think that um, essentially, obviously, Zoom has taken over the world. Um, and so I, I don't know how, what difference anywhere it's made um, in that sense. Right, right. No, yeah, I, I understand that. And, and since you, you know, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, it was, it was, most of your clients are from the real estate, uh, uh, you know, real estate industry. So, yes, I understand that, you know, uh, real estate industry has been 
I, I think it was one of the one of the strongest hit industries in in the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. I think it has started, uh, you know, to come back. Uh, not that strongly, but yes, it has still started to come back. So, yeah, I get that. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Uh, I think Abhishek, uh, Abhishek, you're there. It was really nice having you, Ben, and uh, we are glad to have you here with us. So we have actually started this customer interaction series, and it's uh, like you are the first one, uh, first of our customer to get started. So. I believe we would be sharing more of these interaction with you. And yeah, that's it from my end, Sandy. Anything from you, sir? Your side? Yeah, I think, Ben, thank you so much for your time and uh, you know for giving us uh, these 30 minutes. I really appreciate it. Um, as Abhishek mentioned that, yes, this was, uh, you know, this is the first uh, customer interaction series session uh, that we're having. Uh, and we, of course, decided to go with one of our oldest partners, uh, that is you, of course. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely, we'll keep in touch. And yeah, thank you so much. Take care. Perfect, guys. Keep up the good work. Um, you do do really good work. Definitely, Ben. Thank you so much for that as well. And uh, yeah, you take care. Have a great day, sir. Bye-bye. Cheers. You Bye. too. Bye, guys.